Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for the growth of my channel and thank you especially for all the wonderful comments that you make about me. You, you just have no idea how much I appreciate it and I'm so very thankful for all the people that come to my channel and watch my videos. So thank you very much. I have several items on the news agenda for today. The first one is titled Rogue Prosecutors and the Rise of Crime. Now this is an issue that you may or may not be familiar with. If you're keeping up with some of the news you might know about it. It just depends on what kind of news you get. But <clears throat> back in uh, oh about 10 or 15 years ago George Soros started funding movements to replace the secretaries of state of various of the various states with people that were amenable to his radical views and would help to shepherd in a new era of socialism for America. And he had a parallel track where he was trying to replace prosecutors with prosecutors that would not uh, prosecute crimes, basically. Uh, <clears throat> I want to read you a, a little bit of this. I'm going to put the whole thing, the, you know, the link to it in the description, but I want to read you this highlighted portion. That changed in 2015 with the launching of the George Soros-funded progressive prosecutor movement. This movement is animated by two beliefs. The first is that the entire criminal justice system is systemically racist. The second is that the only way to fix the system is to dismantle it by replacing law and order district attorneys with pro-criminal and anti-police district attorneys. The sick irony of this movement is that in the areas where it has prevailed, the most harm has been done to the racial minorities whose interests it purports to represent. And you may be familiar with some of the outcomes of this uh, type of thing with the increases in crime in various places. And um, this is a rather lengthy article, but I, I highlighted another portion of it that I wanted to read to you because it's really stunning. In the five years before 2018, when Larry Krasner was elected in Philadelphia, there was an average of 271 homicides per year. Since 2018, there's been an average of 457. That's average of 271 to an average of 457 per year, of which 83% of the victims were black. Non-fatal shootings have risen from an average of 1,047 per year to 1,588 per year. Aggravated assault while armed with a handgun went from 2,209 per year to 3,116 per year. Retail thefts went from 7,412 per year to 9,084 per year. And auto theft went from 5,691 to 8,665 per year. That's a stunning increase in crime, and it's across the board. And the reason why it's happening is because these prosecutors won't prosecute criminals. Plain and simple. In Chicago, in the six years before Kim Fox became state's attorney for Cook County in 2017, there was an average of 510 homicides per year. That number rose to 660 in her first year, and through 2022, it averaged 666 per year, with over 75% of the victims being black. To put this carnage into perspective, between 2003 and 2010, there were 3,481 Americans killed in action in Iraq, an average of 435 per year. In the war in Afghanistan, between 2001 and 2014, there were 1,853 Americans killed in action, an average of 141 per year. Chicago's annual murder rate dwarfs these numbers. It is not an exaggeration to say that parts of Chicago on any given weekend have become domestic war zones. <clears throat> this is a direct result of having elected the types of prosecutors that refuse to prosecute crimes. 
you know, in New York City, they have eliminated bail. So <laughs> as soon as you're arrested, you're released on your own recognizance. What do you think criminals are going to do? They're going to go right back to what they were doing. That's just common sense, isn't it? But obviously these people know what they're doing. They're not stupid. So they're doing it for a reason. And their reason is they want to destroy the legal system in America. The next article I have is, the headline is, China behind a superhighway that targets the U.S. with mass migration and economic warfare. This article talks about the uh, Darien Gap. If you're not familiar with the Darien Gap, it's an area of the uh, of the uh, the country of Panama that is dense jungle and almost inaccessible. And what's going on there is NGOs, non-government organizations that are funded by government, are have moved in and set up camps in there to help migrants move from south of the Darien Gap to north of the Darien Gap. Once they get past that hurdle, they're on their way to America. And not only are, are, is that happening, but they've also discovered camps that are, are very tightly controlled and have high security that are populated entirely by Ch Chinese people of military age. So, and, and you know the Biden administration knows all this. They're well aware of it. They're not stupid. But this is what they want. They want to get as many people into the United States as they possibly can for whatever reasons, who knows, maybe to create havoc, maybe to get more votes, who knows? I mean, what difference does it make what the reason is? The fact is what they're doing is illegal. Now, another thing I have is a tweet thread about how government worked with private industry to censor opinions that they deemed misinformation. I thought this thread was interesting because this, this person, Mike uh, Benz, B-E-N-Z, goes through uh, a number of things that he covers. It's multiple tweets, and he covers a lot of the different aspects of what's been going on. Basically, the government is not allowed to censor speech. So what they've done is they've funded private organizations to do that for them. For example, Stanford University and, this, and the University of Washington have set up centers, if you're at all familiar with education as I am, you know that uh, centers are a big deal. They get, a, they get funding, they set up a center, and they're, they're ostensibly they're going to research a particular topic. Well, the topics these centers are researching is misinformation. And then what they do is they notify the social media uh, outlets like Facebook and Twitter and so forth, and they ask them to take those posts down. And in the past, they've been doing that, but the Twitter files busted that whole scheme wide open, and now it's common knowledge if you've been paying attention. The next item is an update for a CDC investigation. And this one, um, I have a... Uh, is that it? Yes, that's it. Um, I have a video that I want you to watch, and I'm hoping that I can get it back by going back here. There we go. So uh, basically what this story is, is about three years ago, Congressman Tom Massey from Kentucky caught the CDC intentionally lying about COVID vaccines and natural immunity. And so he extracted a promise from them to stop lying and tell the truth. Well, they didn't. They kept lying. And so we're going to watch that video. For more than three years, yeah. we've been following the scandal it's, where Congressman Tom Massey caught be, the CDC. If you're like me, you're going to be irritated by it, I can tell you that. Okay. Let's go back to the beginning. And here we go. For more than three years, we've been following the scandal where Congressman Tom Massey caught the CDC intentionally putting out false information about COVID vaccines and natural immunity. The CDC and its top vaccine advisors wrongly claimed that the original vaccine studies showed there was a benefit to people getting vaccinated even if they'd already had COVID. 
Massey recorded his conversations as CDC officials admitted that wasn't true, but balked at correcting it. And they said, thank you for finding the mistake. Um, we're going to fix this. And I thought, well, okay, problem solved. This is how government works. But it didn't quite turn out that way. Two days later, the same Dr. Cohn who'd promised a fix joined other CDC doctors in repeating the false information. This time in an online session for medical professionals. They wrongly claimed studies show people who've had coronavirus do benefit from the vaccine. So, uh, Sarah Oliver, uh, what uh, should people who have had COVID-19 uh, be vaccinated? And should they be vaccinated now? Data from both clinical trials suggest that people with prior infection are still likely to benefit from vaccination. So I called them up on Tuesday as soon as I could to ask them why it hadn't been fixed. And it was like I was starting all over with the same people. And instead of fixing it, they proposed repeating it and just phrasing their mistake differently. Well, eventually, the CDC agreed to correct the misinformation, but Massey said the revised language was still wrong and left the same misimpression. Last October, Massey asked the CDC to answer to the continuing issues. More than three months after a deadline, the CDC responded, but avoided the question and simply stated that, quote, CDC issued numerous public health guidance documents specific to the differing needs of Americans. CDC continues to monitor COVID-19 to ensure that CDC guidance and recommendations reflect the most up-to-date science, end quote. Massey responded by telling Full Measure, the CDC letter is completely unresponsive to my particular questions. What are they trying to hide? We will find out. You already know that Americans have been growing fatter and more. Now, my question for you is, how are we supposed to trust the CDC if we know that they're lying and they refuse to stop lying? This is supposed to be the preeminent organization in the United States with regard to health. And we can't even trust them to tell the truth. It's it's a, a screwed up, crazy, mixed up world that we live in where we can't even trust the so-called experts to tell us the truth. I mean, it, it's just a, astounding to me. And they're not the only ones. I have another article called Never Trust Dr. FDA. This is by Don Serber. Don's been a journalist for about 35 years. He has quite a wry sense of humor, and I enjoy reading his articles. But uh, he talks about how the FDA has been lying to us. And when they've been caught, they just keep on lying. So we have the two preeminent organizations that we're supposed to be trusting for our health. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, and the FDA, the, the uh, Food and Drug Administration. And neither one of them is trustworthy. Neither one of them will tell us the truth. And not only that, but they're using the government to censor people that point out their lies. You can't make this stuff up. It's crazy. And then the last article that I have is uh, an, a very interesting one that I think you'll enjoy finding out about. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and pull it up for you. The title is huge, The WEF Agenda could be banned from this U.S. state. Now, this article is written by Peter, uh, I th think his name, I can't remember. Let me look. Peter Emanuelson. He goes by the handle Peter Sweden. And so that's why you see up there at the top, the Freedom Corner with Peter Sweden. He, he generally reports on Swedish uh, issues. But uh, in this article... He's going to talk about what's going on in the state of Louisiana. Louisiana has passed a law, at least they've passed it unanimously in the Senate. I don't know if the, the uh, House has passed it yet. But the law reads, the World Health Organization, the United Nations, and the World Economic Forum shall have, and when you see the word shall in legislation, that is absolute. It means that you cannot get around it shall have no jurisdiction or power within the state of Louisiana. No rule, regulation, fee, tax, policy, or mandate of any kind 
of the World Health Organization, United Nations, and the World Economic Forum shall be enforced or implemented by the state of Louisiana or any agency, department, board, commission, political subdivision, governmental entity of the state, parish, municipality, or any other political entity. So basically what they're saying is in Louisiana, we're not going to comply with the uh, global world order stuff. We're just not. We've made it illegal for us to comply is basically what they're saying. So that's interesting. We'll have to see if if that law uh, gets spread to other states and becomes a thing throughout the country. Obviously, it won't in the blue states because they're all in love with all that world stuff. But maybe in some of the red states, we'll see that pass. Similar legislation, I mean. So, that's the news for today. I hope you enjoy these, and I look forward to your comments about them. And, again, I do this not for political reasons, but because I want you to be aware of news that you may not ever otherwise hear about. You're certainly not going to see any reports on the mainstream media about what went on in Louisiana. You're not going to see the mainstream media reporting that the CDC and the FDA lied. They just don't do that. That's, that's not what they do. So I hope you enjoy these, and I keep uh, doing this every day because I think it's important. And I will put all the links in the description, as I always do, so that you can follow up on this on your own if you like. So I lastly want you to know that I pray for you. I pray for every single one of you that watches my videos. I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy, that you'll live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, anxious for nothing. Think about that, nothing. No anxiety at all in your life. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will let your request be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet, out.